move assignment value to function open account. Yo, this is good. Serenade, it's a uh, voice to code application. It's a little app you put on your computer and it will take input from your microphone and turn it into commands on your machine, on your laptop, on your computer. Add variable print underscore outlet equals print outlet. Type parent, type true, close parent. I think it's primarily designed for coders. Their examples seem to be primarily focused around coding, but it actually works outside of it as well. You can navigate your computer itself using Serenade to a certain degree, only using your voice and issuing voice commands. Previous tab. Next tab. Close tab. It's a concept that I think has been around for quite a good while already and I remember seeing this video from seven, eight years ago of a guy uh, navigating and writing some Python code uh, using his voice but he needed to uh, use some sort of like easily recognizable sounds and, 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 and I don't know, words that the program itself would recognize such as pa, ka, cha, I mean I'll show the video right now, it'll be easier. Percent soy, right, percent, numbers, lack, Ish, right, Kamaline, Bard, Mesp, Lape. This is my setup at home uh, screens, nerves from my neck down to these two fingers on both hands uh, caused issues that led to my hands progressively going numb. I was at the point where I couldn't work anymore. Now, Serenade is different in that it recognizes your naturally spoken language. It's an app that utilizes a machine learning model that processes my voice that it has never heard before. I can say things in my own natural voice with a cheap shitty mic that has a pretty rough audio quality. Move assignment value to function open account. And it's capable of taking that audio and figuring out what is that I actually want to say. Obviously, it's not perfect, there's still a ton of things that it doesn't really do well, but I think already in its current format, it is absolutely mind-blowing in how well it performs its, its task, its, its job, what it's designated for. I think uh, the primary use for this kind of software would be people that for some reason are incapable of using their hands to actually type the code on the keyboard. They use their own voice to be able to write the code down. And there is a number of services that already facilitate this kind of voice to code uh, transition, voice to code typing. But I'm um, seeing how well Serenade already performs. I'm kind of excited to see how far can we go in the whole concept of being able to create code without actually having to type it down. I mean, we all know about things such as Neuralink, which supposedly in the future will remove the necessity of us actually typing anything on the keyboard completely. It goes in your skull, replaces a piece of skull, and this is sort of what it looks like. Uh, that's a bit futuristic, so let's look at that when it actually comes out and we can uh, prove whether it's working or not. But for now, let's dig in and have a look at how Serenade is performing. Okay, here we go. So this is the main UI of Serenade. Uh, it automatically recognizes that I'm typing in VS Code, which is nice. And it tells us this guide will walk you through writing your first few lines of code with voice. Click Start. Open Atom or VS Code and create a new file called Serenade. Okay. When you're done, click or say Next. Right, so to be able to start using it, we have to click on, the, on that big red button on the top. If you have any troubles uh, making it work, go to settings and make sure that your microphone is selected correctly out of the list of things that you could be uh, using as your microphone. So now that I click on that and I say next, it's gone through. As you speak, you'll see a numbered list of possible commands appear below. The first one will be run automatically, but to select a different one, just say the number of the row you want, like two or three. So it makes sense. It will start guessing what we want to do, and out of the things that it presents, we can start selecting them by saying one, two, three, four, or whatnot. Makes sense. Type import random. Undo. Now, let's write a function to compute a factorial with voice. Add function factorial. 
add parameter number. Add if number equals zero, add return one. Add else, add return number times factorial of number minus one. Next line. Add value equals factorial of five. Congrats, you just wrote your first function with voice. Next, let's try editing some code. To continue, click or say next. Add parent account. Go to line one. Delete line. Second method. Decent, I, I like it. Like it recognizes that I actually want to go to the second method inside of here, right? We have a function defined over here, but we also we have a class with a couple of methods defined inside of it. Fantastic. Delete third parameter. Copy method. End of class paste. Amazing, like so it goes to copy the entire method that we currently are pointing at, then goes to the end of file, end of the class, sorry, and then pastes that method in that place. Previous line three times. Go to deposit. So I'm guessing it tries to go to the nearest word that it can find for that sake. Change word to withdraw. Change word to remove. Undo. Go to previous word. Change word to remove. Change word remove to withdraw. Change remove to withdraw. Change withdrawal to withdraw. Nice, it works. I'm glad to also see that this isn't just the tutorial working us through the examples that was preset, but we can interact with it already directly and, and respond to what we want to do. Anyway, change plus to minus. Start of file. Add new line. Two. Add all caps min balance equals negative 100. Repeat. Line 20. Move assignment value to function open account. Yo, this is good. Can we see this again? Right, so we're assigning checking account, the class that we're working on, to the value account. And now we're gonna say, move that assignment value to a new function open account. Move assignment value to function open account. Fantastic. So cool. I mean, just, just, I think the more fluent you, you become with the language that this uses with all the commands, selectors, etc., uh, the better you become, become at doing this. But uh, just alone, it's incredible how much context you can figure out from our code alone and understand what it means to, yeah, like to move an assignment value to a new function and call that instead, right? Super cool. Adding a condition. Add if number less than one, Add return false. Delete next if. End of line three. Add for i in range of number. Ddent four. <laughs> that is so good. So like. It, it will make an assumption and try to put the code in some reasonable place, but you can tell it like indent and dedent it. Obviously, this is more meaningful in Python than anything else. Still, super cool. Start of argument list, add argument two. Add if number mod i equals zero. Right, I think I'm starting to understand this. Whenever you say add, it will do it in the next line. Like it's add is for putting things, putting new things on front of whatever you already have. So how do I edit the currently existing one type? I think it was type. We'll find out. Add return false. Add new line. End of file, add a prime of three. Three. Add print prime of five. Add assert prime of seven. Type double equals true. Style file. Cool. Awesome, you're a voice coding pro. Here are a few final tips for using Serenade. 
So there's a Serenade community uh, in a Slack group where you can get direct help from Serenade team and meet other people that are using it. Fantastic. Okay, we'll have a look at that later. To learn more about all the com voice commands supported by Serenade, check out the documentation. Well, that makes sense. Read the docs and try it out. That's it for our tutorial. Now try writing a function on your own. How about one that traverses a string, reverses a string? Don't hesitate to reach out via Slack if you run into any issues. It's nice to have that little bit of onboarding that directly encourages some communication with the team. So fantastic tutorial, just getting on board with the tool itself. Super cool to have that little sort of step-by-step -step, uh, guideline that takes you through all the kind of core basic functionalities that you may use with this particular tool. And I also appreciated that we get a chance to say what we wanted to say and the program would respond to it. So it kind of proves that it, this isn't just a programmed, you know, step-by-step -step path where Serenade knows what it should be typing in because it's going through the tutorial. Indeed, it seems like it, it, it is responding to what we're saying to it. But I feel it's necessary for us to actually do a proper test and try to write some of our own code to be able to prove whether it works or not. Okay, so I thought to test it out, I'm gonna go ahead and write a little code snippet that I've been using as a proof of concept of the library that I've built not long ago called DataBay. Um, I thought it would be fun to kind of try to reproduce the same thing that I was typing manually myself uh, using Serenade right now and see how it's gonna perform for that particular case. Let's go and give it a shot. Right, so let's start by saying new file, one, save file. Okay, right, let's see how it goes. Just to be clear, I'm going to be using this little snippet of code that I wrote before as a reference, so I don't have to make any mistakes as I go. So we're going to be trying to write that type of code in Serenade right now. Okay, here we go. Add comment produce. Add stock inlet equals to Okay, so you don't put two at the end of stuff. If you say equals two, it will actually say equals and then write a number two. Not great. Delete word. Type HTTP inlet. Undo. Add capitals HTTP inlet. Right. How do I type stuff in capitals? Let's see, let's see. Documentation. Pascal case. Okay, type Pascal case. Right, let's try Pascal case. Then. Type Pascal case HTTP inlet. Type open parentheses, new line, tab, type open quote, type https colon forward slash forward slash, type one word blockchain, type dot info forward slash ticker, type quote, type close parentheses, two, end of file, add comment consume, add variable print underscore outlet equals Pascal case print outlet. Add argument true comma true. Undo. Type argument true comma true. Undo. Add argument. Pass argument true comma true. Pass argument true. Right, when you say pass, sometimes it pauses, surprisingly. Type open parentheses. Type true comma true. Type close parentheses. New line, new line. Undo. New line. Add variable link equals capital link. Add parameter stock inlet. Undo. Add argument stock inlet. Undo. Now, how do we pass arguments? Type in parents stock underscore inlet. <laughs> Undo. Type in parents stock underscore inlet. Left. Type comma space open bracket. Type print underscore outlet. Type close bracket, comma, space, new line, tab. Type interval equals date time dot time delta in parent seconds equal one. Okay. 
it's funny because sometimes I feel like the most basic commands don't go through and it's kind of hard to make it understand I want an underscore somewhere or that I'm using a variable and all that. And then another time you write an entire line of code just with your voice and it understands what you're trying to do. Cool. End of file. New line. Add variable planner equals Pascal case APS planner in parents link. New line, add planner dot start, type parents, two, start of file, add import date time, add from database dot inlets, import Pascal case HTTP inlet, new line, add from database dot outlets, import Pascal case print outlet, add from database import link, change link to capital link. Change database to database. Three. Left, 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 backspace. Line three. Change database to database. Line six. End of line. Add from database.planners import Pascal case APS planner. Two. It's pretty good. It's, it's, it's amazing. Like once you get familiar with the, with the syntax and everything, you can do quite a lot which surprises me thoroughly. Big part of me right now asks me myself, is this going to be more efficient? Obviously, if the reason you'd be using this kind of software is because you're unable to type on a keyboard, then this will be enormously more efficient. But even for people who are capable of casually typing, I'm thinking for my own case, how fast can I write code using this? How proficient can I get with this kind of a system? Because if you could get more efficient and more effective at, write, at writing code, then just by typing, you could just sit back and relax. And uh, new line. Oh, I, I paused it. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. <laughs> okay. Okay, I did just realize that um, I've got a small typo in my code. So how about we go and fix it? Change stock inlet to stock inlets. Three. Change stock inlets to stock inlet. Repeat. Save. Change database to database. Save. Execute. Run. Menu run. Okay, we can't run stuff just yet. That's fine. Um. So, uh, just to make it run, I needed to add this little configuration due to the information that's coming out from this particular endpoint. Don't mind that. We can verify now that the code we wrote and after fixing all the bugs and problems, indeed, will run. There we go. I wish there was a like a, like a way to tell it to start listening and stop listening, because I feel like if I pause it, I'm not able to resume it with my voice alone. So it would be useful to have a capability of kind of saying, wait for a second, put, put yourself on hold until I say another keyword, another magic word, another safe word that it would resume listening to me so I could make, for instance, a commentary or think to myself or whatever else there is. I guess with undoing, it's, it's quite easy to, you know, to negate anything that you may say to it. But I find myself constantly thinking, I wish there were times that it would listen and that it wouldn't. And I wish there was a way for me to turn it on and off again. I guess with a keyboard shortcut, it would be quite easy to do. But, well, aren't we trying to avoid touching the keyboard at all here? So, yeah, just a, just a little comment here. Still, pretty, pretty amazing. Like, yeah, this is the snippet that, that I've been building and I've been uh, promoting my, uh, my library with. And I'm surprised to see that it actually works. So next thing we're going to do is trying to do a tiny bit of reworking on it and seeing how much more we can push it. Add class Bitcoin inlet. Okay, but um, in all fairness, I have a feeling that we've already covered quite a lot in this video and it's getting longer than I thought. So um, if you're still watching at this point and you'd like to discover a little bit more, I will make another video when I put the remaining part of my experience with Serenade, when I will dig into doing some rewriting for the code I made already, as well as trying to write code out of my head like I mentioned before, the code that you've seen me typing, saying out, 
until now was something I was reading at the same time. And I feared that this could have influenced my experience with Serenade. So second part of the next video is going to be me getting into properly trying to code something out of my head. But like I say, I feel that this video has already been long enough. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.